Okay, so welcome to the Dapper Day 2024 virtual conference. Uh, the subject of today will be Dapper and QMQ. And uh, so we will do the presentation with uh, Dior. Hello, uh, hello everyone. My name is Dior. And Abad, I'm a uh, founder and CTO of uh, QMQ. Um, you can find me uh, and connect me in, in GitHub and also in uh, with email at leo.nabat uh, and uh, at uh, cubemq.io. Uh, very happy to be here. So me, uh, Jim Flisch, I'm responsible. I'm leading the .NET team at uh, Elia Group. You can join me to at uh, jim.flisch at elia.b. I'm also owner of a framework available open source available on github and um, uh, also working on a guidance tool which is available on the visual studio marketplace you can reach me uh, to the email address info at refugio.net and at gfish uh, for you on twitter so the first thing that I would like to we would like to say is that uh, we did already a presentation on the Dapper Community Call 79, presenting uh, Dapper and Tube and Tube and all the work that was done uh, by Lior. Um, well, so please check this first. Uh, it's also valuable uh, information. And on the agenda today, the purpose is to really show how to work, how to, to use uh, Dapper and CubeNQ uh, from a dev machine to a Kubernetes environment. Okay, so it will be with .NET 8 and even Aspire 8. We will spend uh, some time uh, uh, about uh, uh, setting everything, but also how the how to build. Um, a microservices uh, application and which are the best practice regarding uh, Dapper uh, and, and, and the configuration to, to use it correctly from the dev to the uh, production environment. Okay, yeah. what is QBMQ? Uh, QBMQ is uh, an enterprise gate message broker and message queue. It's very scalable a high availability and secure, meant to be run on native Kubernetes cluster. KubeMQ has uh, four components in the in the ecosystem. One of them is the main one is a KubeMQ cluster. It's a um, very small, fast, and lightweight cluster of uh, uh, messaging broker. And we have three uh, families of components. Uh, one of them is the KubeMQ targets that is the open source that able to connect UBMQ cluster to different sources like uh, uh, databases, cache, uh, many other uh, what we call the third party uh, targets. Um, the second one is sources, meaning that it's a component to ingest data into QBMQ. And the third one is what we call QBMQ bridges that able us to connect between QBMQ cluster in order to provide some uh, uh, some hierarchy and able to uh, uh, build a complex uh, uh, um, architecture of QBMQ cluster together. Uh, what I'm going to show you now is uh, how to set up very quickly a QBMQ um, uh, in your desktop. Uh, we're going to use um, the Docker uh, um, version of QBMQ, uh, uh, um, a binary will be soon, uh, a direct binary will be soon uh, 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 be available. Uh, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show the whole flow of uh, how to run it. So in order to get a QBMQ uh, key in order to run QBMQ locally or uh, in your cluster, uh, you can um, go to QBMQ.io and click on the try free button. When you will uh, uh, click it, you will be redirected to the account page. Here you have three options to sign up. So I'm going to use the Gmail option. I'm going to click on it. And after two, three seconds, uh, uh, I will be able to register. And then we have uh, the uh, we have the options to uh, uh, how to install KubeMQ. I'm going to use the option with Docker. I'm going to click on the 
uh, run Docker and just pass it to my terminal, run it, and that's it. I'm going to go back to uh, uh, to my uh, uh, web and I can click on the dashboard and here I'm getting the QMQ dashboard in a couple seconds. Okay, fine. So me, I will now uh, present. Uh, so I will share my screen to 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 show you um, what personally I'm I'm doing. Also, is uh, so I I'm back to the presentation. You see that me personally, I'm uh, mapping a volume, meaning that if I show um, on my local uh, on dev environment, I click on the dashboard of QMQ, we can see that um, I have already some uh, topics that uh, exist. So I will just now uh, show you that how easily, uh, and this is something that I like because when we develop sometimes we, we need, or we want to have something really clean to understand the different uh, messages that are sent. So what I just do by having this uh, uh, capability to map to a local storage. So I just stop here. I go to the folder where I've mapped. There is a store which is created. I just delete. The, the, so if you look at the store, you will see that there is uh, somewhere binaries to store the, the information uh, from the messages that are used by or sent to QMQ, via QMQ. So I will just delete it. And now when I uh, restart my Docker image and I click on, on the, the QMQ dashboard, see that I have a fresh image with no topics, no channel, uh, nothing is there. And so I can start with a fresh image. I can compare when I, I'm playing the application. We will go back to the, the, the dashboard uh, in, in the in the next part of the presentation. So no. Concerning the cell-based architecture at Elia, we are analyzing the business needs and we are decomposing this in three levels. The lowest level is the level that we will use to start to build the cell, which is a set of microservices that will just uh, implement the business need. We have an API gateway and a messaging platform, which is used by the QMQ to uh, exchange the messages between the different cells in the cell and outside of the cell. The guidance is supporting this uh, and will create everything regarding the gateways, the, the services, uh, and adding Dapper to deal with the messaging platform and the cache. Regarding the, the cell-based architecture, when we implement this in the code, what I like is that the developer uh, has the same uh, configuration that he will have to, uh, to build when he will deploy in a production environment. So it means that locally on the development, all the components that we have to use for all the services that exist in a cell I put this also in a one folder and the developer has to deal with the scope and, and define this correctly to select which is the component that, that will be used for a specific uh, services. Exactly like when we deploy on Kubernetes, we deploy in a namespace all the components and we have to play with the scope to say this uh, component is used by these services and not by the other one. So now we will see this in a, the solution that I have. So we, we can see we have a structure with a backend and frontend, but we will uh, look at the backend part. And so we have different services, contract, core, mail. And what we can see is that we have a Dapper folder. And the Dapper folder is where we will see the different configuration that will uh, 
use, that will be used when we develop in development or here in this case, uh, the staging one. What we see is that the same components are defined for the, the development and, uh, and uh, the staging. And if I take here the, the store one, we see that we use the scope uh, to define which is the service that will be uh, using this one. And so the developer has exactly the same uh, constraint regarding Dapper uh, with the, 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 the defining the good scope uh, when he will run. And so after, it's just a copy-paste that we have to do and, and to, to, to give the only the, the configuration regarding the address or the password. For the Dapper co uh, component with KubeMQ, we adapt uh, the pop sub. For example, in this uh, um, in this uh, example, we, have, we adapt the pop sub pattern uh, with uh, 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 Dapper. And what you need to uh, um, to set up is is simple um, the address of your KubeMQ uh, um, cluster or uh, instance. In this uh, in this case, we are running on localhost. Then uh, we have two, uh, what we call pops up event type. One we call event, and the second, what we call event store. And the difference between them events are very fast uh, pops up that in memory, uh, and store is a, a pops up with persistence, means that you later on be able to uh, um, uh, retrieve message all one uh, start from beginning and uh, any kind of replay mechanism uh, with your um, uh, uh, with your uh, channel uh, grouping a group is the ability to um, to group couple um, clients together in order to uh, be able to do some, for example, load balancing between uh, services. A client that is a, a unique uh, um, ID for the service in order to identify to QBMQ service, say a QBMQ server, uh, which one is the client is connected. OK, so Leo, if I'm on a service and I just publish a message huh, to a topic in this case, this case sorry, the group and the client ID is not something that I need to configure on the component level because it's not used, in fact. Hmm? Uh, yes, uh, but if you want to keep the name of the server who send you in order to see in your uh, uh, dashboard uh, the details, you will need to set uh, the client ID. The group you don't need. The group is only on, on the receiver side. Okay, good. So and when when so if you have uh, your uh, your services deployed in the Kubernetes environment that you say replicas is set to three, for example. And if you want to just receive the message that it was published by one of the instance, you'd have to define a group. Otherwise, you will receive the message three times. And so it's yes. really important to have this concept uh, in mind. Uh, it but depends it, on what you want to do, in fact. Huh? In the, when I generate the, the code via the guidance, is that the component directory is um, linked to the uh, development folder. And just I remember, because we define all the services that we will start, I will show you this in uh, Aspire, are linked to the same uh, folder where all the components are defined, it means that immediately the developer is, is uh, in front of the same way uh, Dapper is configuring when you deploy in Kubernetes, meaning that you have on your namespace a lot of um, components that are declared and just the scope is used to uh, to trigger or to filter what will be used for these specific services or not. And uh, and so when they are developing and they do a, a mistake, they will see this immediately and they will uh, correctly, uh, they will be able to correctly configure the, 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 the staging or development environment. So now I will switch to um, uh, the solution and I will go to 
in the app settings. Uh, I think here I've already cleaned this, so because I'm on the spire, so there is no Dapper Sidekick. So you see, before huh, I was using uh, Dapper Sidekick locally on the development machine, and we are still using it. Uh, and um, on this project, where I'm able to run this with uh, .NET Aspire to check and validate everything. In this case, um, I comment this part, so Sidekick will not be used. And if I look at the Aspire the solution here on the program, I can see that for each service that exists, okay, I have a Dapper Sidekick. So I'm using currently the Preview 2. The Preview 3 theoretically is for this month, February. But at the moment, we are doing the, the, the record of this uh, presentation. The, I'm only on Preview 2. And uh, you see that we define the resource path, and the resource path is just to mention the, 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 the Dapper uh, development environment and all the configuration that we use. And this is something that I use for each services. And those services will be deployed at the end in Kubernetes in a, in a namespace. So really in, uh, in important. Um, I'm in the demo and showing the dashboard and, and we will see this, so it's not the moment for the moment to, to, to show that. I will again continue the presentation. Now, when we uh, go in production, um, we have not yet uh, for all the application uh, Dapper and in Kubernetes, huh? so uh, we are not uh, fully migrating in Kubernetes. So for the applications that are not yet able uh, to be deployed on the Kubernetes environment, it's more because we don't have yet a Kubernetes on-prem. And for critical application, we don't do this in the in the cloud for the moment. So in this case, we are still running um, uh, Dapper on, with, via Sidekick as an NT services. So we use the sidekick functionality, we activate the, this via the, the settings. But when we deploy in Kubernetes, in this case, we just annotate the, the YAML file, the deployment manifest, we mention the app ID, and we remove the section with the Dapper sidekick. And so we are able really to switch from uh, uh, so locally, it will be on Aspire 8. Uh, in production, it will be or as an NT service or in Kubernetes. And we are really flexible and, and we can play this easily with this. And this is what I like in, in architecture is the capability to uh, really uh, switch and, 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 and have a lot of flexibility. So now uh, we will see uh, the QMQ dashboard and uh, all the possibilities. And for this, I will uh, just start by uh, running the application with the, the, the Aspire and, and show this in live. So uh, I will uh, run the, the application. So I start this. And uh, Aspire will start everything for me. So he will launch all the different uh, services. He will launch the Aspire dashboard. And we can see that the, the uh, Aspire will start the Dapper sidecar uh, side by side with the different services. Then it will uh, also give me the access to, to the app, which is just a component. And when I launch this, the, the app will be launched. I'm able to connect to my Swagger page. We can go to the different uh, services that exist. And I can, uh, for example, uh, query uh, the list of, of companies. That's more or less what uh, it's done. We will see the, the part regarding the, the tracing. Yeah? So we have to uh, everything which is done nicely. And I can see also, I will show you this, uh, the, the logs of the, the, the Dapper. I can see that um, the QMQ 
uh, component is started correctly. Uh, so we have the secret store, but we have also here the pubsub um, and we can see this. So we have an environment which is up and, and running. Oh, I know I will go to the demo HP, HTTP. So um, I will launch the dashboard of QMQ. And know that I have started the, the application, even if there is no message, I have already uh, the services who have uh, uh, who are listening to the different uh, topic that I create for this application. And uh, I will, um, we will have a look on what is um, going through the, the user. So when we create a user and so on, there is a mechanism where a message is sent, uh, it will be create a message to say, okay, uh, you are registered. Um, and so, um, Lior, there is here two concepts, which is subscribing and watching. Can you explain which is the difference between the subscribe and watch? Yes, um, the subscribe is a simulation of really client subscribe to uh, the message, like uh, to, to, the, to the channel. So we actually will get the, uh, the messages and watch is like a monitoring means like, like in the eyes what going on on the channel and is not uh, um, uh, looking uh, and actually accepting the client so it's like a, a mainly for debugging and or development mode that you will be able to watch on top of the uh, channel uh, by the way it's very uh, uh, um, very uh, useful in other messaging pattern like a command and queries, queries that you can see who can who is sending a request who is responding and and this is the same uh, uh, the same way how you can really watch on on the channel see what's what is the traffic uh, running in this channel okay so me i will subscribe uh, to to this uh, channel meaning that no when I will publish a message, I will be able to see, and we will see the content, what is in this uh, message. And I'm using the cloud event, uh, so I'm using Dapper with cloud event, and so we will see what is happening. So now I will show this uh, in the application again. So uh, when I have subscribed to the uh, user, so I will create a, uh, a company, yeah? so there is a message which is sent, but uh, I will show you this uh, with the, the user. And now I will create a, a, a user. So each when I create a user, a message is sent uh, to the adapter and, and QMQ to the mail services. Yeah? A mail is sent, so you can see here the mail which is sent. And um, I go to the Uh, the, the, the QMQ dashboard, sorry. And when I click, because I subscribe, I can see the message and the content. So here you see the, the data. Oh, so it's a cloud event uh, message. So meaning that we have the, the, the cloud event uh, information. So in the data is my message. Uh, really. And we can see the, the trace and the, uh, the trace ID, which is used to uh, um, for the open telemetry, yeah? and I will show you this in Aspire. And so based on, we use also the, the, the type to after listen, and based on the the, tar, the, the type that is used, uh, the, the message will be routed to the, the services to, to be handled by the, the, the mail one. Okay, I will show you this in the project uh, because it's really uh, in, in interesting probably. To, to show this. So thanks to that, I can um, I can uh, see what is happening on the, on the on the wire. And when I subscribe, which is also interesting, is that I can take a copy of this message huh? and I can uh, republish it. Okay, so I can just take it. I will uh, uh, resend this to. Uh, I will. 
send it and know that I have uh, send it, uh, but the mail is recent because the mail uh, is uh, receiving the message again. And so this is really handy when you are debugging your application and, and you have a full process and you need just to, to test a component, you just publish the, the, the message again and again, and so you can debug uh, your, your, your services. And it's really, um, really interesting, this feature, and, and easy for a developer to, to, to use this via the, da the dashboard of Q&Q. So now if I go back to the, uh, maybe uh, the, the project, what I do also is that for, um, at the level of the project, I have for each services that exist a Dapper controller, and I will not use this one, which is not really interesting, but I will use the main one, for example. Um, and so the, the, the Dapper controller is something which is with a specific group name that I exclude from the Swagger page because it's only something that will be used by, uh, by Dapper. So I don't want to be able to see this in the Swagger page. And uh, for each um, event that is created, I have a post with the, uh, the, the root. Uh, and if I look at the, the Dapper component for the mail, there is um, a subscriptions uh, definition. And here you can see for the type of message, each uh, route that will be used to reach the service. And this is how the glue is done. Huh? So we have seen the message created, the cloud event type the, is uh, also uh, sent. QBMQ uh, is transporting this. I can see this in the dashboard and this is mapped to the uh, good endpoint uh, via the, the subscription. Regarding a little open telemetry concept, is not really the open telemetry one, but uh, here the, the, the QMQ has the concept of uh, also where you can see all the clients that were connected and exchanging messages uh, via um, a specific channel. Uh, and, and so uh, it's a nice view. <coughs> so it's a nice view uh, because you can already see uh, and have information about uh, uh, who is uh, sending, who is receiving, who, who is sending and receiving. Okay, so a nice feature that helps to understand. I can see now really the, like the normal message I'm using, not republishing multiple times the, the, via the dashboard the, the message. I can see the, the gateway called uh, with the old concept which are inside regarding the security the contract which is called to create the user, the, the message which is sent uh, via uh, Dapper and the PubSub mechanism. Uh, and, and I can really see the trace and, and all the, 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 the detail about this message uh, via the signs to the open technique. Uh, Leo will explain the KCC tool and what is it exactly. KCC. Just run it, and then automatically it will open a new uh, uh, web page. I can see that I have uh, 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 the dashboard. It's currently clean. There is no um, uh, no CubeMQ. I have running uh, um, K3D as a, a, a local client, a local Kubernetes cluster. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to click, put my uh, license key to add cluster, and that's it. We're going to wait about uh, 10 to 12 seconds. Uh, he will bring up uh, all the necessary components. Uh, in, in Kubernetes, we are using an uh, operator in order to load um, all the uh, cube components as we have bridge, target, sources, and then in 10 seconds, we can see that it's up and running. Uh, if you want to um, look on, on the dashboard, you can click here, and this is the dashboard of the cluster that you have. You can see we have currently two nodes. The nodes are going up uh, 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 as we speak. You see the third one uh, going up. And then we can, from here, we can continue 
if we want to uh, uh, see more, we can see logs, we can see services, endpoint, we can do uh, port forwarding if we want to uh, have a, a local uh, exposure to the cluster. So we can, we can set here and then automatically uh, all, the, all the traffic for port 50,000 on gRPC will be forward. Um, here we can have more, um, uh, all the settings, images, authorization, TLS, routing, health, many, many, many things that to, uh, to run. Um, out of the box, QBMQ is uh, running uh, almost without any configuration, and that's it. Wow. So thanks, Leo. I think it's a really, uh, well, really interesting uh, and how easy it is huh, to finally uh, deploy uh, QMQ in 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 the uh, in the production environment. The last uh, slide, which is uh, the unit, huh, question and answer uh, 